Yeah, I didn't need to make any assets for that animation. And it still turned out pretty okay. Okay, I just want to make this real quick. And I just got home from work. But apparently, Luma AI came out with the text to 3D feature. And I just want to see if that makes making like a 3D scene any easier. And by the end of it, I'll tell you if it's actually worth a damn or not. What I'm going to be doing is just like trying it out because as far as I know, it's like you just type in text and it pops out like a 3D asset. From what I've seen, and this just came out either today or yesterday pretty much. But as far as I know, it's kind of like what Mid Journey had where it was like it was like a Discord thing. It has like a Discord server. You just type in what you want and then out comes your asset, right? And with AI videos, that was amazing because you could just think of whatever you want and it just makes you that picture. Now what Luma AI, and I've seen other services do it, but Luma AI is starting to become like runway. It's starting to become like a one-stop shop now where it's like, okay, we have nerfs. Now we have dodge and splats. And oh, now they have text to 3D. What I want to do is try out that exact thing. I want to get on the Discord, just spend an hour. Right now it's 7 27. I just want to spend until 8 30, 45. See if I can pop out a quick 3D render and just see what it looks like. If it looks great and I didn't even really have to put much time into assets to make a really good 3D scene, then that's fucking amazing. If the opposite happens and it's like, oh, it's just looks like more PS2 graphics. I don't know. Just imagine what this technology is going to do in like two, three, five years. Like maybe it's going to pop out just high quality assets just from you typing in stuff. I'm going to spend an hour typing in assets, just coming up with something simple. Like, I don't know, maybe I'll get ChatGPT to give me like a prompt. And then I'm just gonna make a scene. I'm gonna render that out, maybe overnight, it depends. Make it look as pretty as I can just to see if this text to 3D feature is actually, again, worth the damn. I'm giving myself an hour, I'm about to time myself. Yeah, spoiler alert, this still took longer than an hour. But regardless, I started the timer, went to ChatGPT, asked it to give me an idea, and it told me to make an enchanted forest full of towering trees, glowing mushrooms, sparkling fireflies, and a river that shimmers like liquid crystal. Which sounds like a lot for an hour long project, but good thing we have Luma's genie to make it all for us. And so I typed it all into Luma's Discord and got these exact assets. And generating assets is easy. As the name kind of suggests, just go into Luma's Discord server, you direct message the genie bot, hit slash on your keyboard to start the command prompt, and type in whatever you want it to make. And in 20 seconds, it'll give it to you, which is super fast. I'm fast as fuck, boy. So let me just go down this asset list for an enchanted forest. Let me generate some trees. All right, cool. We'll just make a forest out of that. Let's generate some mystical mushrooms. All right, nice. Apparently there's some magical fireflies in this forest, so let's type that in. What the fuck is that? There's also supposed to be mystical creatures in here, so I'll just make a squirrel and a fairy. Okay, cool, I have what I need. Let me just start building this thing. And as I got into it, I couldn't find the right look for an enchanted forest, I'm not gonna lie. I legitimately just wasn't feeling the vision for this one. But as I played with the lighting, I stumbled into a more horrific type of scenery. I was digging this dimly lit foggy forest vibe, so I just switched the vibe all together to something more scary. So I generated some more stuff, like this scary girl, ooh. And the fun thing about Luma's text to 3D is that it can generate T-Pose human-like assets, meaning they can be rigged and animated. So I threw her into Mixamo for some grueling animations, like this one. Maybe she could be eating a head or something, I don't know, is that scary? And obviously I have to add some blood if she's doing that, which came out to be more like gory meat, but I'll just take it. All right, so put these in, make some final tweaks, and I finally got my first genie scene. Render that, composite it, and this is how it turned out. Uh, so that didn't turn out too bad for some 20 second assets and it only took me uh, three hours um yeah the timer went off like three different times but that's mostly on me but as you saw that's not even close to perfect it's sometimes a wild card for how it interprets your prompt like how it interpreted fireflies and this moana prompt i just did for fun 
I just wanted to see what would happen. And obviously the quality isn't spectacular. The main examples being these blotchy trees and the main subject, the, the scary girl. Silhouetting the trees and shadows actually made it work for this scene, but pushing into her distinctly revealed how low quality the model actually was. So yeah, Genie is far from perfect, who knew? But then I found out what this magical button does. Apparently, there was a way to make the quality a bit better this entire time, and I just found out about it just now. The refine feature actually does, in fact, improve your renders. It takes a bit longer though, going from a 20 second wait to 20 minutes, but I was actually surprised how big of an improvement this actually gives. Look, it actually gave the scary girl a face. She looks way better now. Uh, a little less scary though. And it gives more detail to the textures. If I knew this, the first animation would have looked way better. Now. I can't help but to think, I need to redo this render experiment to get a better feel for the true quality of what Genie can really do. All right, let's go for round two. All right, let me ask ChatGPT to give me a prompt again. Oh, okay, it's space scene, all right, bet. Let's start generating some more assets, but this time, let's make sure to refine every single one of them, which will take some time, so for this one, I'll give myself two hours. Let's put a little landscape in there, maybe we can make it look like some moon planet. Let's generate a spaceship, maybe mess with the texture reflections, because apparently that's a feature here. Slide that in there. Let's generate some aliens. Hopefully refining actually makes these look better later. Oh. Oh, shit, it actually worked. Let's try generating a mystical stone, maybe, which I just borrowed from one of their showcase servers. And let's just start building the space scene, which honestly is kind of fun once you already have your assets generated and ready to go. You can basically just set dress and let your creativity just run wild. It's like I'm playing with Legos or something. I was really able to lean into discovery since I didn't have to spend any time making the actual assets. I was able to just try out different things and different ideas for the scene and just came up with stuff as I went along, which is kind of the fun of kit bashing. As opposed to if I had to create every asset myself, I'd probably have to plan ahead so I don't waste time modeling something that's not going to be used. A nice benefit for being able to generate assets in 20 seconds flat, I must say. And leaning into the cosmic explorers idea, I found myself wanting to turn this into an alien scene. Maybe this alien colony landed here and discovered some magical crystal stash. I don't know. I don't know, just something simple. Let's bring these aliens into Mixamo to bring them to life. Maybe these smaller aliens can be the minions of the bigger one, the bigger, taller alien. He can be the leader. And Mixamo has so many stock animations to slap onto these grunts, we can just have a variety of animations. And obviously this leader alien needs an animation. And I somehow found one where he picks something up. So maybe the rock discovery storyline can actually work here. Let's place down the leader alien. All right, cool. Let's have him pick up the rock. Okay, that's even cooler. Oh, maybe a fog filled crater would be cool. Maybe that's where the stones originate from. Let's fill in the scene with the minions to start building this alien colony idea. Maybe some spaceships in the back. That'd be cool. Maybe sprinkle more rocks everywhere so it's not just one. All right, cool. This is looking a little more put together now. Let's render and comp this thing out. And uh, this is how it turned out. And honestly, this wasn't bad either. It looks way better than the first one, I'll say that. It's giving me Halo vibes. Refining these assets really made a world of difference here, so it goes without saying I definitely messed up the first render. It's still not anything earth shattering though, it just kind of reminds me of old video game graphics. Part of me feels like these assets would still be best when not being zoomed in on. Just like in the first render, the overall scene looks fine, but it starts to break when you're focusing in on our character. Genie is a really good way to generate things quickly, but the game quickly becomes how can we still use these without tanking the production value. I can imagine it being great for filling in scenes though with like small knickknacks or like background characters far into the sunset or something. However, the quality is, isn't there yet. So all in all, I'm still finding Luma's text of 3D kind of fun, but I've been seeing some surprising results when refining. It's just not every asset will turn out great, refined or not. On average, it'll at least turn out okay, but every once in a while, there'll be something great. So
some genuinely impressed me. Like just now, I discovered how good it is at making rocks. And just look at the showcase channel on their Discord. I'm surprised some of these were even generated from AI to begin with. I even stumbled upon this cathedral scene, which is honestly impressive. Or even take a look at this Team Fortress looking environment. Again, made with genie assets. This quality seems actually good. Or maybe it's just because it's farther away. I don't know. I'm blown away at just the sheer idea that if you take a bunch of these generations, you can just make a full out scene and even add some detail into it. This tool actually might have some potential. Is it possible to push this tech even farther? Let me just try one more time. Let me try to make one more render, again, with just genie assets, and let's see if I can recreate a photorealistic scene. Maybe this is possible. I want to see how close the quality can get beside a real life reference. So, let's try to make something a little more simple. What about a living room? So, let's find a living room picture to recreate. Oh, okay, this looks good to me. And with an actual image to reference, it should be easy to know what I need GD to generate. And by just looking at this, I already know. It's gonna be a lot. Well, let's just start the timer again. Maybe this time I can actually hit my time goal. Third time's a charm, am I right? Now, uh, let's just go one by one and generate every single asset we see in this picture. The red couch comes first, let's just... Let's get that. There's a pinkish pillow on it. Let's get that next. There's also this potted plant on the right, the dark wooden floorboard, these brown circular seats. There's this blue and white rug, this middle square thing, another seat, some That's books. Okay, what about black books? Too many. Or a golden me. Too many. Oh, me. Too many <sighs> okay, um, I mean, you get the point. It was literally a huge laundry list of assets, and I have to refine every single one. But Luma limits you to only three at a time and only 20 a day. And I hit that day limit and actually had to come back the following day to actually finish this project. So there goes it being quick. But once I got everything generated and refined, you already know what time it is. It's time to start set dressing this thing. And this time it's easier because I'm just gonna straight up copy the picture I'm referencing with minimal texture altering, if any at all. Like with this middle couch thing, which is perfect already, it's just the wrong color, so I fixed it. Or this red couch, which in the picture it's supposed to be L-shaped, so I fixed it. I just put these pieces where they belong, rendered it, comped it, and before I know it, I have this. Oh my god, look at me. So, what are my final thoughts? Overall, I actually think Luma's Genie is kind of, it's, it's cool tech. I thought the generations were worse than what it actually could generate. They, they did turn out pretty well. The best scene in this experiment was easily the living room scene. With that wide shot, it looks like a living room. It's really bad with greenery for some reason, but it's really good at making like ceramic and furniture. Those are the two things I found that it was great at making. It looks all put together, but it's just, it starts to break once you start pushing in and start, you know, noticing these fine details. And I feel like that would, that's really what great about photorealism. When you really go into the detail, you can admire what the artist is putting into that. Personally, I think AI can't capture that magic right now. It's not capturing the uh, minute details and like the magic that happens when you really dive deep into an object and really zoom in. When you zoom into these, you, you can tell it's fake. What What's the ethical use behind, you know, AI generated assets? Just in terms of like technological advancements and simply just making things like 3D animation just more accessible, especially to like future kids that could, you know, be the next generation of Pixar animators. Maybe this is their way to get into that. Just baseline, I do think it's just a cool concept that you can just type in something and it generates, you know, assets for you, for you. And so you can just create scenes just on a whim is it stealing other people's work is this you know is this a right to even use i don't want a computer to steal my work i i get it but all in all it's it's not only fun to use but it's honestly pretty impressive so like in two three four five years this could probably be super even more impressive and maybe i'll revisit this idea and just see how many more scenes i could do this was a fun experiment like i i do think there is some use cases for text to 3d so like some assets can actually be used. Like you could use that in a photorealistic render 
and maybe get away with it. If you want to just use these humanoid assets for like a background thing or something that's just like to fill in space, not like to showcase anything, Genie can be used to do that. It's not replacing modeling at all, but maybe in some years it can. I don't know. Good job, Luma. I'm slowly becoming a fan of y'all. But yeah, that's all I got. Cool tech. I can't wait to see what more AI things go come out. These three renders turned out fun. I'm all for, you know, the discussion of whether this is ethical or not. As far as just using it as just a fun way to just experiment, sure. Whether I'm for it or not, I, I'm still, I'm still kind of deciding. I'll see what happens in the next 3D experiment that I do, which I'm hoping is either recreating that museum or making a 3D animated film without actually animating it. One of those two videos will come out soon, but until then, hope you guys enjoyed it. Stay tuned for more random 3D experiments.